Burgundy. Wait, no, wrong nation. The Netherlands. In our timeline, known for wooden shoes and windmills. But the Netherlands in this universe have a much different fate. But first, a recap. We started as the nation of Burgundy, failed an invasion of Britain, got Calais in the peace deal, coped, killed Hesse, went bankrupt, got Orthodox in Aachen, fought Denmark, formed the Netherlands, had a civil war, and now we're here. We're still fighting. Yes! And look, none of that even matters, because look at that. We're now a Dutch Republic. And we can get it, we can just pick the next guy. Uh, I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna go status right here. They were both kind of ass, so I'm just gonna pick that guy. I'm gonna accept Frisian as a culture. And we're, we're now a republic. 10% heavy ship combat ability, more trade efficiency. With this new heavy ship combat ability modifier, we had to use it. And that meant it was time to build the great Dutch Armada. With the Dutch Armada almost complete and our economy looking pretty great, it was time to go for England again. Yes, we were gonna try to cross into the British Isles once again and try to kill England once and for all. England still had about 26 heavy ships, which was very scary to deal with. I was hoping that we could overwhelm their heavy ships right in the beginning while they were still fighting the Portuguese and hopefully surprising them. Before we get to that war, I just want to tell you guys about a super special event that I'm having this Saturday. We're doing a 24-hour lobby starting from Saturday, July 31st, beginning at 10 a.m. EEST and going until the next day EST. Uh, you can convert this time to your local time. It's 24 hours. I'll be on all day. I hope to see you guys there, and let's get back to the video. Here we go! Round two. Fight! With the help of Portugal, we won the initial sea battle against England. But there still was this fort in Kent. Now that that's over, Reserve troops in, siege troops back. We'll just do a quick rotation in case England comes. Hoopin' shit in LARPin'. Battle's lost, I think. That's battle's lost. It's okay though. He took he committed a lot for that and he's being sieged in the north. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why'd they do that? One tile retreat? Are you serious? <gasps> okay. Okay, and he's doing that. I'm taking a naval battle in the in Dover, Straits of Dover. Okay, yes, we go there. We go okay, there. okay, okay. I need help. Uh, we cycle. We cycle. We, we, we like I don't know the England cycle. Yeah, the England cycle. Oh, Portugal was down to three heavies. Half my army was stack wiped, and I was stuck on the other side of the strait with a lot of debt. This started feeling like a repeat. That's an oof. I should have doubted. Ouch. Absolute Habibi, what's your favorite country on multiplayer? Despite my own chat not believing me, I believed in me. And that's all I needed to win this war. That and one good naval maneuver. One good naval rotation. And I could completely turn this war. Oh man, it feels good being Dutch. I had to activate every single modifier I could. It was time to get the morale of Navy's advisor, and it was time to become the defender of the faith. 
Oh man, oh man. You gotta go soon. 4.41 naval morale. Will it be enough? At this point, the war was looking great for us. Half of the English fleet was at the bottom of the sea. We were able to cross, and it was very likely that England was very close to bankruptcy. But that's when we got a really weird proposal. Sweden offered to help us in this war if we gave him Scotland. At first, I was like, no, no way. But then I thought, hmm, this could be a clever way to kill England in just two wars. I called in Sweden into the war, and England unconditionally surrendered immediately. To make this peace deal as effective as possible, we would give two Scottish provinces to Sweden in the north, blocking the crossing to Ireland, and then I would take four provinces in the south to getting the strait as well as London. Why did we do this? Well, now Sweden can release Scotland, and we can double truce break, both me and Sweden will truce break England, now Ireland, and kill him in one fatal blow. And that is exactly what we did. First, he unconditionally surrendered to Sweden. And then he unconditionally surrendered to me. And we took the most brutal peace deal possible, taking money while he was also in a bankruptcy. You might be thinking, Habibi, this is so mean. Why did you have to do this to him? Just remember, we shared the same node. If I didn't do this to him, he would do this to me. Hey, dude. Um, it's only if you're 10 exactly. Finally, dude! Exact. Mm. Let's see, what can I do? You I read that chat? Get inflation below 15, alright? It reduces inflation by 10 and gives us one stability. So uh, we just need to push this down thanks. to 15 and then boom, yes, we get another yes. 10 down. I was not done there. The ruthlessness was running through my veins and I needed more blood, more colonial blood. And that's when I decided I should kill Portugal. Portugal gave me false info that the British fleet had half the ships that it actually did. I was the one that ended up sinking the British fleet, and I was the one that took down England. And I knew that Portugal had zero heavy ships left from fighting their war against England. So what did I do? What did I do? I joined with the Africans, and I declared war on Portugal and all of its colonies. Get the get the go get ready, get the ships first. Ships first, not the siege. Dutch Navy is number one, chat. Remember that. Dutch Navy is number one. Unfortunately, here in the VOD, I was playing DMCA music and copyrighted music, so I can't really play the audio of me talking myself live. But essentially, I was explaining to chat that the reason why, main reason, and main goal of this war was to get the New World. If you guys recall in the last episode, Portugal was giga colonizing, min maxing, colonizing, zooming, playing, speed running colonial game, and they had 
all of North America and all of South America as colonies. They didn't have it all filled up, but they had all of that as colonies. And I wanted, as Netherlands, I wanted my own colonial empire, but I didn't want to go exploration or expansion ideas. I really didn't want to do that. So instead, I just decided to steal Portugal's North American colonies. The deal was simple. I would take North America and Mali will take South America. After occupying their homeland, all we had to do was send some troops down to Brazil. You're going to Brazil! And begin our war effort against the eight different colonies. We pushed to the north where we met Portuguese and Portuguese colonies on open battle. Many, many troops were lost in these battles, but it would be worth it. We led the charges with the Africans close behind, showing our superiority to the Portuguese and their colonies. At the same time as the Brazilian offensive, we had another stack in Massachusetts that was going to siege the North American part of the Portuguese. And that's when Portugal unconditionally surrendered. This little foothold in America didn't seem like much, but one day these four provinces will become the strongest colony out of any nation. This is also around the time that Sweden was beat up by Ruthenia. Um, so we just did the finishing job and we cleaned up their land in Scotland and Ireland. One big mistake that I made here is that I fed Northumberland, my vassal, too much land in the British Isles. I was just really afraid to spend admin points because I did not have that much. And finally, our first colony of many was formed, New Holland. First thing I did was get a player on it immediately. And after many years of zealots converting our land, we finally became Orthodox. We did unfortunately fire a religious turmoil, but religious turmoil, again, is one of those disasters that are not the most difficult to deal with, and um, they don't cause too much trouble. Our RNG continued to be really sick, with getting a 565 king as well as getting a really sick Dutch unique event. And by 1600, we had almost consolidated the British Isles and we had three colonies one in Canada, one in the 13 colonies, and one in Louisiana. We were really about to get ready to scale. Our income was about 220 at this point, but this is just the beginning when it comes to economy. I'll see you guys in the next part where we will continue this campaign. What will happen next? Where will I expand next? Will I reach a 1000 ducat income? Figure out next time in next episode and next series. I hope to see you there. This is Absolute Habibi and I'm out. See ya.